While growing up in England, a young Gareth Edwards was obsessed with movies. He used to steal his father's camcorder and make short films with his friends. With his passion for movies, he went to film school but was hit with a rude awakening. Making films was complicated. The logistics, the equipment, the planning, the accounting, all of it seemed unnecessarily complex to him. It was the early 2000s and his roommate in school was studying computer animation. This was an eye-opening experience for Edwards, who thought many of his problems that arose with professional filmmaking could be fixed with a computer. After graduating film school, he bought a high-powered PC and studied computer animation. He was trying to get a job in television and was bringing his showreel to job interviews. At the end of the reel, he added these little animations he did himself on his home machine. This intrigued the people giving the interviews, and eventually he got a job in television doing visual effects. After years of doing effects for TV, he became frustrated because he wanted to direct. He started offering his visual effects services for free if he could direct something. Finally, after many offers, one producer accepted. He directed TV shows for about five years, all the while saving his money in the hopes of producing his own film. He wanted to make a guerrilla-style film, a form of indie filmmaking shot on a low budget in real locations with no filming permits and was often all improvised. While thinking of a concept that would work within the confines of this, he had a revelation. He was on vacation and saw some fishermen pulling a net full of fish onto their boat. He had a vision of them pulling in some gigantic tentacled creature, but they were very ho-hum about it. Like the fishermen dealing with this sort of thing was an everyday occurrence. This gave him the idea to make a monster movie that takes place years after most monster movies end. It would be set six years after an alien invasion, the point of when life had returned to normal on Earth. The aliens were still present, but it was no longer a big deal. He had three different ideas for the story and presented his concept to Vertigo Films in the UK. They liked his concept of a couple trying to get through an alien-infested Mexico on their way to the US. Edward started working on an outline of the script while designing the monsters and creating the world. He saw a video about how there was potentially life on Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter, which gave him the idea for his alien concept. He wrote a story about how NASA was collecting samples from Europa, but the probe handling the material crashed on re-entry into the Earth. The life forms evolved on Earth in Central America where the probe crashed, making this area the infected zone. They then built a giant wall to keep the aliens contained in Central America. While life had returned to normal for most people, there was still an ongoing war with the aliens. Edwards came up with 170 creature designs and presented them to the producers, who helped him narrow it down to the one he'd use for the film. While the movie would have aliens in it, the focus would be the couple. Since they were shooting the film on the fly, Edwards wanted to have a real couple in the film. One of the producers mentioned Scoot McNary, who he just worked with on In Search of a Midnight Kiss. He brought McNary up because he knew his girlfriend, Whitney Abel, was also an actress. Edwards flew out to meet the couple and spent five days with them to get to know them better. After that, he knew they were right for the film. Most films today have dozens of crew members and tons of equipment, so Edwards wanted to reduce that down to the bare essentials. The director, line producer, sound recordist, and unit production manager, along with the two actors, Scoot McNary and Whitney Abel. Every other actor in the film would be one of the locals. McNary was playing Andrew, a photojournalist, and Abel was playing Sam, the daughter of his boss. Andrew was filming in Mexico, and his boss sends him to get his daughter and bring her back home safely. While traveling back to the U.S., they get stuck right in the middle of the infected zone and have to do what they can to survive. The equipment was a digital EX3 prosumer camera with a 35mm lens adapter, batteries, storage, audio gear, lighting, and camera mounts, all of which fit on a single table. The idea was to be able to travel around with the crew and equipment in one van so they can stop and film at a moment's notice. They planned on filming in five countries, Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Costa Rica, and the United States. Three months after getting the green light, they were in Mexico filming. He wanted to make what he called the world's most realistic monster movie, so they kept the filming as real as possible. They drive through various locations, and if they saw something that fit, they'd get out and start filming. They shot in construction zones, jungles, on a train, in a hospital, anywhere that fit the structure of what they were trying to film. The actors were given guidelines of what to talk about with each scene, but beyond that, they improvised. In many instances, if they needed extras, they'd give one of the locals $10, have them sign a release form, and they'd improv along with the actors. The locations they were filming in were very dangerous, so the government sent a security team to go with them. When they first arrived in Mexico, there was a prison riot in a local jail, and the prisoners hung the decapitated heads of the guards on the fence. So this, of course, made everyone very nervous. There were some days where the filming had to be cut short because the guards got word that there were some bandits looking to rob the production. Since they had no money for practical effects, Edward shot the film in a way to add the effects in post. 
he filmed many scenes where the camera would pan away to nothing, which would become something he'd add in down the road. He also shot numerous signs so he could digitally replace the text. Every day after filming, they returned to their hotels and dumped the footage for the editor to work with. He'd set up an edit suite where he'd work for a few hours, and then break it down when they moved to the next location. They didn't slate anything, which made it easier up front, but way more difficult for the editor. While filming at the top of the Mayan temple, the director almost fell off. This road was wiped out by a flood. A month before filming, Galveston, Texas was destroyed by a hurricane. They went there and filmed within the destruction, taking advantage of a bad thing and turning it into essentially free production value. Finally, they shot the end in a small gas station in Texas. They couldn't afford to shut the place down for filming, so they just worked while customers were coming and going. After seven weeks and hundreds of hours shot, they stopped filming. When he started working on the film, he called it Monsters as a placeholder, figuring he'd change it to something better down the road. He never did decide on another name, so he just kept it as Monsters. Edwards worked in tandem with his editor, Colin Gowdy. While Colin combed through the footage, Edwards worked on the visual effects. He created tanks, jets, buildings, debris, the wall, and of course, the monsters. The monsters were, as Edwards called them, bioluminescent crustacean cephalopods that emit light like deep sea creatures. He even had the audio team create whale-like sounds they used to communicate. They worked to find the narrative within the footage that was shot. Colin had worked on documentaries before and said editing this was more in line with that than with a traditional film. Edwards took a page from one of his favorite movies, Jaws. Even though the film opens with a girl being killed, we don't see the shark until much later in the movie. For this, they open with a few glimpses of the creatures, but we don't actually see them again until much later in the film. The editing and visual effects took seven months to complete. The first cut of the film was four and a half hours long. They worked to get it to two and a half hours, but they were shooting for closer to an hour and a half. The final cut was 94 minutes. The film premiered at the South by Southwest Festival to tremendous acclaim. The distribution rights were bought that night by Magnet Pictures. The movie had a small release in the U.S., but did very well in the U.K. and Russia, pulling in over $4 million. Because of the strength of Monsters, Edward was offered the job of directing the reboot of Godzilla, which, like Monsters, focused more on the people than the creatures. That did so well, he moved on to directing Star Wars Rogue One. While filming, Scoot and Whitney joked that if they could make it through this, their relationship could withstand anything. So after filming completed, the couple got married. Edwards said making this film was the most stressful thing he'd ever done, but he doesn't regret a single thing. While usually I'm not the biggest fan of movies that rely this heavily on CGI, what Edwards was able to do was nothing short of incredible. While Edwards didn't have an exact number, he said the film cost well under $500,000. Edwards proved himself to be not only an amazing director, but someone who can deliver phenomenal work for very little money. His effects work is beyond many of the super huge budgeted films of late. The vehicles and other things blend seamlessly into the world, which is astonishing when you consider he was able to do this without anything being green screened. While his style might not work for some, it's hard to argue his talent. There's a reason he's become one of the most sought after directors today, despite only having two films currently released. Monsters is not a film for everyone, but the ones that it is for appreciate it greatly. The movie's a uniquely told love story with a heavier focus on the people than the monsters. Despite the name of the film, it's not a traditional monster movie. While the focus of the story was on the journey of Sam and Andrew, the film also has commentary about immigration and drug wars. Plus, Edwards said the idea was, if you consider something a monster, then it will be. I think a large part of why some folks don't like the film is because they were expecting Cloverfield, and instead they got Before Sunrise with tentacles. So I listened to Peter Jackson, who said it's better to do things as a model than in computer graphics. And he's got a lot to answer for, because <laughs> I wasted a whole day doing that. 